What is Linux? You may be a Linux user already and not even know it. If you've ever used an Android device before, then you've used Linux. To understand this and to understand what Linux is, let's first look at what an operating system is. An operating system, or OS, is a key part of any computer system. You can think of it as an app for your actual hardware, which are the physical components that make up your machine. Every desktop computer uses an operating system. And the three most popular types of desktop operating systems in use today are Windows, Mac, and Linux. An operating system manages all of the computer's basic operations by doing things like displaying characters on the screen, figuring out which keys you're pressing on the keyboard, turning on the fan when your processor chip in your computer gets too hot, storing data on the hard drive, and more. The lowest level of the operating system is called the kernel, and it's the first point of contact between the physical and digital world. Linux is a type of kernel, and it was developed by Linus Torvalds in 1991. And I think there's a little bit of confusion with the term Linux, because not only is it a kernel, but it's an operating system. Uh, the term is used to describe the set of programs, tools, and services that are typically bundled together with the Linux kernel to provide all of the necessary components of a fully functional operating system. And this association is also referred to as GNU Linux, because many of the associated tools are GNU components, GNU being an extensive collection of computer software. And to understand this relationship between GNU and Linux, let's go back to the late 1960s when a highly influential operating system known as Unix began development. Unix is monumental. Uh, apart from Microsoft's Windows NT-based operating systems, nearly every other operating system can trace its heritage back to Unix. Linux, Mac OS X, Android, iOS, Chrome OS, Orbis on the PlayStation 4, firmware on your router, all of these are called Unix-like operating systems. The first version of Unix, released in 1973, was used primarily as a research tool in universities. High-powered desktop workstations from companies like Sun and IBM proliferated in the 1980s, and they were based on Unix. In 1984, a man named Richard Stallman began what is known as the GNU Project, and it was an effort to create a free version of Unix. By free, Stallman meant software that could be freely used, read, modified, and redistributed. His free software foundation successfully built a vast number of useful components and fundamental tools, but without a kernel, their dream of a completely free operating system could not be realized. Meanwhile, an unaffiliated Linus Torvalds was busy creating the Linux kernel as a student at the University of Helsinki in 1991. He wasn't satisfied with MS-DOS and wanted to use the Unix operating system on his personal computer for free, so he set out to create Linux. Linus and over 100 developers worked on Linux over the next couple of years, and in March of 1994, the initial Linux kernel was released. Linux is not a Unix derivative because it was written from scratch. There was a technological marriage arranged between the Linux kernel, located in Finland, and GNU, which was located in Massachusetts. The code was transmitted using the internet to allow a union between the systems and produce a freely modifiable and very useful operating system. It was born on the internet. And that's also where it continued to grow, becoming one of the most prominent examples of free and open source software collaboration. The entire Linux OS is open source software. And this means that anyone can use, copy, study, and change the software in any way they choose, so long as the source code is openly shared with others. To date, thousands of people have made improvements to Linux, and there are several distributions or flavors of Linux. In every case, the source code is free, but in some cases, the distribution is not free. For example, you have to pay a license in order to run Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Debian aims to provide an extremely stable distribution. Linux Mint aims to provide an extremely easy distribution for users of operating systems like Windows and Mac. Fedora exists to be the first to use the latest software. You may have heard of Ubuntu, which is another popular distribution, but there are hundreds more. 
Linux is being used by several millions of users worldwide, from Google server systems to Android devices. This is probably because there are advantages of using Linux, such as customizability, the low cost of free, security, versatility, stability, and more. But enough talk, let's have a look. Okay, so Linux. Here we are, right at our own Linux desktop. This is a fresh install of a Linux distribution called Linux Mint. And I, I like the looks of it. It has a little start menu here, which has a lot of programs already installed. You see there's a little Firefox icon. So right off the bat, you can surf the web. Um, I don't know if people even say that anymore, but anyway, um, you can use it to browse the internet. Um, you have a basic file system, and if you're a Mac user, you might this might look familiar to you. So um, like I said, there's a whole bunch of programs pre-installed. You got VLC Media Player um, for video files, and there's a whole generic Microsoft Office suite and you can see it, it it looks just like Microsoft Word so you can get some word processing done and they actually have a little software manager where you can find new apps and download them uh, I, it used to be the case where you'd have to use the terminal to do a lot of this stuff but I think uh, and the terminal being your your basic command prompt in Linux and it's still a very powerful tool and you're gonna to have to use it if you really want to get deep into Linux but I find that these Linux distributions are getting more and more graphically based I don't know how to say that right but there's more graphics being used in Linux distributions and you can see look at they have Steam I didn't know Steam was on Linux but I guess it is um, so if I wanted to download that I would go to the software manager and right here there's an install button and um, I could I could have Steam and I wouldn't even have to use the terminal. I might have to put in the administrative password, um, which by the way I, I did make a user for this um, operating system when I when I downloaded it and, and installed it. But that's pretty standard stuff. And um, if you've ever used a Windows or Mac, um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's all I got. And um, yeah, have a good one.